Welcome to Ray Avenue. Today's video is about how to extract vital wheat gluten and wheat starch from regular wheat flour. Whether you're into bread baking and can't find bread flour with a high protein content or looking for a protein substitute for your next, I can't believe it's not chicken, vegan dish, vital wheat gluten is a handy little powder that can help you create everything from wow-worthy baked goods to plant-based meat alternatives. Gluten, or vital wheat gluten flour, is a natural protein found in wheat. A small amount added to bread recipes improves the texture and elasticity of the dough. Vital wheat gluten flour can also be used to make a vegetarian meat substitute known as seitan. Combine one kilogram of any wheat flour and 600 grams of water into a dough, either by hand, takes about 10 minutes, or with a stand mixer, about three minutes on a second speed, just like you would when you were making bread. Place your dough in a closed container and allow it to rest for about 40 minutes to an hour for the gluten strands to develop. After an hour or so, to make sure gluten strands develop even more, stretch and fold your dough from all sides and let it rest again for another 40 minutes to an hour. Your dough is sticky, so just wet your hands to make it easier to handle it and repeat this process one more time. Stretching, folding and letting dough to relax is not necessary, however, the step will make separating gluten from starch much faster and easier, and later in this video I'll show you exactly why. After stretching, folding and letting dough rest, and that should take about 2-3 to three hours, it's time to wash it. Add some cold water to your container and stretch, fold and squeeze dough until it releases starch. As the starch releases, water will become milky white. The amount of dough will reduce and go through several changes becoming spongy and stringy, falling apart, before eventually coming back together as a single mass. Strain gluten through a sieve, set starchy water aside for now and continue to wash gluten with a fresh water. Note how gluten is a spongy mass that stays together and doesn't give us any problems when shredding it through a sieve. And this is what happened when I decided to skip stretching, folding, and letting gluten to rest step. Not having a chance to develop strands, gluten remained the way it is in the flour. It didn't come to a single mass, most of it got stuck in the sieve, and separating it from water was a frustrating and time-consuming, messy experience. I tried to scrape it off with a knife and a pizza cutter. Lots of gluten was lost because it got stuck in the sieve, and I'm not going even to mention how frustrating it was trying to wash that sieve later on. So I would strongly recommend to invest a few hours in your dough, stretching, folding and letting it rest, so gluten can fully develop into strands and you can avoid all this mess. Now back to washing our gluten. Set aside for now starchy water, place gluten in another bowl, add fresh cold water and wash it until you removed as much starch as you could. Once all starch is removed, what you have is the spongy, rubbery mass of gluten. 
It's ready to be used for making seitan. You can keep it in the fridge up to a week or cut it into portions and freeze it. To make vital wheat gluten for baking, we need to dry it first. Place your starchy water in one container and keep it in a cool place for the next 24 hours for starch to settle at the bottom. Cut gluten into thin strips and dry them in the dehydrator or oven. If you're using oven, make sure temperature is below cooking, which is 80 Celsius or 176 Fahrenheit. Gluten strips are dry when they break when you try to bend them. If they bend but don't break, they need to be dried more. Make sure you test the thickest pieces. Grind dehydrated gluten strips in a food processor or a coffee grinder. Sift it and grind remaining large pieces again until it's all powder. And there you have it, vital wheat gluten. You can use it for baking to increase protein levels or use it for vegan dishes. Store it at the room temperature. I used one kilogram of all-purpose flour and I got a hundred grams of protein from it. By now, starch has settled nicely at the bottom of the bowl. Remove and discard water. Place remaining starch on a tray. Let it dry for a few days at the room temperature, or you can dry it in a dehydrator if you have one large enough. After a few days, when starch is completely dry, grind it to a powder. Wheat starch can be used in your regular cooking and baking. It's completely dry and you can store it at the room temperature.